Hello, good afternoon, everyone, once again. Uh, Mohammed speaking on behalf of ESC Clermont Business School. I'm happy to continue with this uh, series of uh, Facebook and YouTube lives, uh, where we get to provide you with lots of details regarding so the school and everything else that might be interesting for you as details and information. So now uh, for the second live, I, I'm happy to be with Sebastian uh, Dwaya and we will be discussing about the MSc in Business Intelligence and Analytics. Hello, Sebastian. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. So my name is Sebastian Doya. I'm the head of the Business Intelligence and Analytics program here at ESC Clermont. Yeah, so we, we will try to have uh, a graduate of uh, the program who might be able to join us uh, uh, later throughout the discussion. But yeah, we really hope that she's going to be able to make it. But anyway, we will start uh, while with... with presenting the program and going through the questions that were already asked. And maybe when Aditutu is there, she would be able so, to talk about some uh, um, things related to her experience in the program. So if you could start by uh, uh, pitching the program within one minute, Sebastian. Yes, of course. So data is the new oil, and data analysis is now critical for companies wishing to improve their performance management, accelerate decision making, and find new business models such as data monetization. So this Master of Science program in business intelligence and analytics aims at training professionals that will provide support to decision makers with a transversal and consolidated view of their data. The program is covering any type of analytics from the self-service BI to the more advanced analysis of big data. All of that uh, in order to understand the past, to better anticipate the future, and in a good collaboration, agile collaboration between managers that have a pure business profile and IT professionals that are more technical. Um, our program is sponsored by two main partners one of the market leading BI vendor called MicroStrategy and uh, a very big IT consulting company called CGI. And this is the proof that uh, the courses, the hands-on sessions, all the meetings with practitioners you will have during this program will be of the highest quality regarding BI and analytics. Thank you so much for the introduction uh, related to the program, Sebastian. Uh, now we are shortly going to move to the questions that were already asked by uh, the followers. And we remind you that you can still engage and you can ask your questions during the live itself. So the first question that was asked by Sujil, uh, what is BI about and why is it considered um, an important domain, especially now? So business intelligence is basically how we can use data to make better decisions. So use data means collect data, model data, analyze them, and then present them in a way which is usable and efficient for managers. Based on that, managers will be better at deciding complex uh, decisions or solve complex problems because this will be data driven. So why are we, teaching we, are we teaching that in a management school, in a business school? Just because in business intelligence, you have business. So it's very important to understand the business stakes, the business needs, in order to provide the best solutions, of course. OK, great. Now we are moving to the technical part immediately. The second question that we received so from Ziad, are R and Python included in the program, or students get to learn about any programming languages at all? Okay, so uh, as I said in the pitch, uh, we are not only covering the technical side of business intelligence, we are covering the business side, the organizational side, the methodology and all aspects of BI. Um, as we are a management school, our goal is not to train developers, IT developers, or not even scientists. But anyway, as you said, it's important to have the minimum knowledge regarding that. So even if we are not covering directly R programming or Python programming, you will use anyway user-friendly software uh, where you can use these languages embedded in something which is more usable for managers, such as, for instance, Data IQ. 
And to get uh, more details regarding that, if you feel that you have this technical background and you want to go further, we are also proposing a dual degree with one of our partners in Germany for those of you who would like to be data scientists. And with this additional semester at the end of our academic program, then you will learn how to program, how to code with R and Python if you want. Okay, great. So it's an extension of what the students learn here. They have the chance of going abroad for one semester in order to obtain the dual degree from our partner, uh, Allen University in Germany. Okay, that takes us to another question that was asked so uh, by one of uh, the followers. Yes, sir. Are students required to come from a technical background or do we also accept students coming, for example, from a commerce or business, pure business background? So this program is open to any type of background and profile. This is what, what makes this program very rich and very interesting to attend. So some people will have an engineering background with some programming skills, some algorithm skills, whereas some other students will have a more business-oriented background in HR, in finance, in marketing. Anyway, all of the students will do some projects all along the two semesters, and they will learn what is missing in their profile just by attending the courses, doing some projects and learning from the other students that have complementary skills. And this complementarity is really what we are looking for. So whatever your background, whatever your profile, you are welcome in this program. Okay, great. So it's not just reserved from people that are coming from a technical background. Uh, another question coming from Fernanda, what is the content uh, of the program like? You already talked about presentations, projects, and things like that. So how is it like to study in this course? So, uh, as I said, apart from the capstone projects that, that will be done all along the two academic semesters, you have other courses regarding um, how to do BI projects, so the methodology to do that, how to organize BI in your company. So this is more the managerial, the managerial part and the skills part the different types of BI to apply depending on the questions you have to solve, the problem you have, you are facing as a manager, once again, from search service to big data, through dashboard, through enterprise performance management, and you will practice all of these modules. So basically, a typical week is divided in, let's say, 50% of theory, where you're going to learn more things than when you arrive at school, of course, and 50% on hands-on sessions to practice on software solutions, in projects, or any other type of uh, way to really apply what you are learning in the theoretical part. Yeah, that's a huge advantage that, as you can see, half of the program is really relying on the uh, learning by doing or bringing the knowledge into practice. It's a huge advantage, of course, because it means that we are not just providing the theory, but no, students are able to experiment and reflect that in terms of uh, projects and so on. Okay, uh, and you already talked in the beginning of the discussion, Sebastian, about the partnership with MicroStrategy micro and CGI. Uh, we have a question from Isaac. What do those partnerships represent, in fact? Okay, so the first one with MicroStrategy is basically um, regarding the softwares, okay? So we are going to use their software, the software they are providing, and which is one of the leading software in the market, and you will have some hands-on session on it, some projects to deliver with it, and it's basically around data visualization, data discovery, uh, uh, advanced analytics as well. So they are uh, giving us the standalone version on your computer, but also the cloud version, all of that included in your academic fees. So this is fully open for all the students att attending the program. And finally, they are also proposing some courses, particularly a certification, a first level of certification regarding their tool, and also some mining conferences all along the semesters. Regarding CGI, they are also doing some conferences to present their company. Uh, it's a good opportunity for you as well to apply for internships and later for a job position, because we have quite a lot of alumni now working for CGI in Clermont-Ferrand and in France in general. Mm -hmm. Plus, they are also giving some courses, particularly in the second semester, regarding advanced ways of... Yeah, okay, clear enough. Uh, just by saying that, we, that takes us to another question that was asked by Bara El-Hafar, who was asking about the internship 
Is it the responsibility of the student or the university? How does it work? You already talked about some of our students, well, graduates now, that are already working for Michelin, CGI, and so on. So how did, it, how did they manage to find those internships? So it's both the responsibility of the student and of the school. So of course, the students have to multiply their application through cover letters, CVs to many uh, uh, companies to uh, uh, increase their chances to be hired, of course. But at school, we are helping you. We are giving you some job marketing classes, basically to improve your CV and your cover letter, particularly if you want to apply in France. We are also organizing all along the semesters meetings with practitioners. Basically, these are external companies that are coming at school and they are uh, presenting their company, uh, speaking with you about BI analytics topics. And this is the good opportunity for the students to push their CV, to create their professional network. And uh, finally, we have also a, a department at school which is collecting all the internship offers from our partner companies. All of that is available um, all along the year in, a, in an intranet website so that um, each student can check regularly what are the offers that could be interesting for him or her. Okay, uh, uh, and uh, now we are moving to another kind of focus. We do know that we recognize generally that the goal of the MSc programs is to enter into the professional world later, but one of our students, so it's the same uh, 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 candidate, or the same follower, so Bara, who's asking about the possibility to pursue uh, for a PhD later on. Is, it, is that possible? Do the MSc programs offer this possibility? Yes, uh, at school in general for this program and all the other programs, we are also proposing for the best students with the best academic results, a pre-PhD program, which is uh, during the second semester. Of course, there is a, a selection to attend this pre-PhD program. And if at the end of this pre-PhD you are validated, it means that you can start your PhD journey uh, in our research lab, which is shared between our school and the public university in Clermont-Ferrand. So as Mohamed said, it's not the, um, the, the way, the path that most of our students are following, but if you are interested, why not? It's an option. Okay, and I think one of, uh, we have had this case before where one of the students or few of the students are actually doing this kind of preparation within the school itself, right? In collaboration with the public university. Yes, exactly. We had the case uh, last year with the students, not on this program, but on the corporate finance program. And now she is giving some classes in our school while uh, following uh, the first year of her PhD. Okay, great. Uh, moving once again to the technical side. Um, so Patty, she's asking, how far do we go into data mining, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning? Okay. So as we are, um, let's say, accepting any profile, any background, this is something we're going to use progressively, step by step. Because if we start with that, some students will be lost from the beginning. So we want really each student to learn at uh, their own pace so that at the end, everybody will succeed in the program. So this is why in the second semester, we are going to, uh, di to dig deeper into these advanced data mining techniques. You will have a dedicated module on that. First, you're going to learn that on IBM SPSS, for instance, which is quite easy to use to do a first level of descriptive statistics. But then you're going to use, as I said in the beginning, data IQ to go deeper into the predictive models. And here, yes, you will use from time to time some uh, machine learning techniques, machine learning being part of AI. So once again, even if our program is not only technical oriented, and we are covering really all the aspects of BI and analytics. Of course, we're going to cover this part in the second sem semester, because it's uh, something extremely important if you want to work in this field. And once again, uh, as we said at the beginning as well, you have this dual degree with our partner in Germany, if you really want to focus deeply into um, advanced data modeling technique, advanced data mining techniques, such as machine learning. Okay, great. And um, something else, Sebastian, especially that's going to be uh, useful. Um, that's going to be useful for those students who are not necessarily coming from a tech background. 
Patty is still asking, so are there any topics you would recommend for us to review in order to be better prepared for this master? Uh, it's not really necessary. I can, of course, provide for all of our candidates the bibliographic references that we're going to use, so some books that are references in this domain, and you can start to get used with them, to read them, but you don't really have to... Uh, you know, uh, watch some online MOOCs or videos because we are we have really uh, built and structured this program so that progressively each student, whatever the input level, is going to learn. So um, if you want to learn on your own before attending, why not? I mean, uh, this is something that is feasible, of course, but it's not mandatory at all. Um, everything has been uh, anticipated so that each step, because we are working in, an, in a very agile and adaptive way, each step will be reachable for any student, whatever their background. Okay, excellent. I think so. Aditoto finally managed to make it, so we would like to uh, introduce her into the, this talk. Great to see you, Aditoto. It's been a while. How are you doing? You. Welcome I'm to this fine. discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's our pleasure. So if you could just introduce yourself to the public. Okay, so I'm Aditya Tobataru. I'm a Nigerian that came to ESC to um, study the MSc Business Intelligence and Analytics in 2017. Um, and so far, it's it, well, for me, the program was good. It was great. And I was able to do an internship. And now I'm working um, in a consultancy company um that's about it for now is there any other information i can add great we already discussed a bit with uh, sebastian related to professional experience some people were asking how the how do you find your internship does the school help or are you doing it on your own or is it a mix of both things sebastian clarified that it's a mix of both so for you how was the experience of finding two internships two very good internships if you could also mention which companies they were and yeah, provide an idea about how did how did you manage to do it, especially here in okay. okay. So for me, um it was both, as Sebastian said, it was there was a um just explaining that there is a company that's interested in having an intern that is specialized in this domain. And for me, I applied and well, based on my interview and how that went, I got the role. So it was a six month internship and based on how that went, which was really well, um, I was offered another, like a contract um, term work for another six months. So at the end of the day, I got a one year experience just after the, the master's program ended. Um, then after that, while I was still on the first one, I got interviews with the first one being with La Montagne, which is a newspaper company here, one of the major regional ones. And while I was still at La Montagne, I got um, a job offer from Supersteria, which is a consultancy company I work with now. It's more digital transformation. And I've been with Supersteria for about a year now, well, over a year now. And honestly, I would say for me, it was quite smooth sailing. An advantage was being able to speak French, but not only for and the personal ex from my personal experience, it was a mix of um, recommendation from the school, um, being able to speak French, and just you know what I actually learned from the course because that's really all I had in this domain, and that's what helped me so much. Okay, great, lovely. And uh, moving on uh, to another uh, focus, so Sebastian, uh, if you could clarify what is the typical uh, career that the students would get upon completing the course. So now we have seen the profile of Aditutu. What is the typical job that the students get after finishing this course? Yes, so the, the targeted uh, main job is business analyst. And most of our interns and then most of our graduates, this is the first job they have, junior business analyst. Then from this job, you can uh, evolve in two different career, okay? Uh, two different career paths. So the first one is if you want to continue in an expertise job, you can start to be a consultant, a BI consultant, or a BI architect, or eventually after some years of practice and additional training, a data scientist. So this is one path which is possible. Or maybe you are more interested in the managerial part of it. So after being a business analyst for a few years, you can start to be a BI project manager on small BI and analytic projects. 
and then bigger projects. So that at the end, after a few years of, of experience, once again, you can be a BI manager, managing teams of developers, of analysts, and of project managers as well. So that maybe later, depending on the company you're working for and your wishes, you can reach the role of chief data officer. Why not? Great. So those are the typical, let's say, career uh, opportunities that you would expect on completing the course. Back to Aditutu, we have already so uh, looked at uh, the background. What is the typical background uh, uh, that students should have before coming to ESC Clermont and joining this course? Sebastian clarified that it doesn't have to be a technical background. Some students, they come from different backgrounds. So for you, what was your background before joining this course? Were you coming from a technical background or non-tech? Okay, for me, there was no technical background whatsoever. I started with economics in my first and then I had my first master's in international human resource management. So it was fully business oriented. But um, now I work as a business analyst and all that I'm working with now was main, was all the skills I needed for this role were gained from the MSc. So really it was not, not technical at all, but I was still able to follow the program without problems. That's great because this is also a sign of assurance that yeah, you are not forced to come from a tech background in order to be immersed in a BI function later on. And yes. for you, what made this like, how was it like to follow some courses that are kind of uh, abnormal for you that are that have you know a new way of uh, uh, teaching? How was the experience for you? For me, it was I'd say it was a bit of a challenge in the sense that it was the domain necessarily have information on or knowledge in. So in challenge in the means or in the sense that, okay, I had to learn new things. I had to learn new ways of learning as well and adapt uh, accordingly. Um, however, the way it was delivered, the way the courses were delivered, knowing that I had help when I needed help uh, made it very, very easy, I'd say. Um, it wasn't too much pressure in the sense that every time I didn't understand something or I had questions, which I always had, <laughs> I was able to either see Sebastian or the concerned lecturers to clarify these things and eventually pick up on the technical bits well, for the basics that we learned. And honestly, it was, it was a challenge, but it wasn't difficult to surmount because there was help as well and lots of willpower. Okay, and the, there is another question from Mami, and I think that's really appropriate to you, Aditutu. What is the biggest recommendation that you would give to the followers and the people enrolling into this course in order to have a successful career? Because you have found very good opportunities, excellent opportunities in France and particularly in Clermont. So if you would like to share a few instructions for students to have a similar career, what would be those suggestions? For me, I would say um, just be open in the sense that be open to the program. So the MSc program, even though you might be technical background, there's something to learn from it and that's why you're there. So just be as open as possible to learning as much as you can. And when the opportunities um, um, start to come in or when you start seeking opportunities, also do not limit yourself to um, a particular company or a particular domain or a particular um, way of working. Just be very open and try as much as possible to, to take the courses seriously because especially if you're new, you're new to it, because that's really what will help you when you get into the, the, um, the domain, when you start working either as an intern or a full-time mm -hmm. worker. But for me, mainly open-mindedness and really taking everything you learn seriously so that you can apply it when it's necessary. And French was also, for me, French was very, very important because here in Clermont, I think French is the business language, so it was easier for me as well to integrate here with being able to speak French. So if you want to stay in the city, for example, um, you can work more on your French and get it to at least a level where you can communicate so that it's easy for you to follow meetings, for example, or even have interviews and it'd be, I'd say it would be a much smoother process. 
and I, I know that uh, you, um, yeah, I think Sebastian might have something to add to this point regarding yeah, the French language. Yes, of course. So I, uh, I'm, I'm totally in line with what uh, Adetutu said regarding the French proficiency, which is, of course, very important if you want to, to find um, an internship and then a job position in French more easily. But anyway, uh, we have some examples, more and more, by the way, of students not speaking French at all when they are joining us, speaking a bit at the end of their academic semester, uh, thanks to our classes, okay? And I have an example of a Vietnamese student, which is now working in Paris, in Rexel, a very big company, as a BINist as well. I have an example of another Nigerian student working as well in Paris, uh, in a, an affiliate of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ubisoft, uh, the game software company. So these examples are examples of students that are not fluent in French, okay, they are just beginners in French, but they found a, a job in France, an internship first, and then a job in France, in the, in the domain of business intelligence. So uh, as Adetutu said, it's important to speak French and we will try to help you as much as we can, but don't worry too much if at the end of the two academic semesters you are not very fluent in French. It does not mean that you won't find your internship and your job in France, of course. So it means that some opportunities that are existing that are mainly based uh, on the English language that are carried out in English, but of course, if you learn French and the more you progress this language, then this will uh, expand your chances and opportunities of scoring something that's perhaps better or of yeah, broadening your search and not limiting it only to English uh, opportunities. And something else added to, to uh, I, knew, I know that you said, so you knew a bit of French before coming so to France, mm -hmm. but how did you manage to improve a lot what, during uh, your stay? Was it mainly through the courses, or did you use some other uh, approaches as well? Um, so the courses helped a lot because, well, we had a lot of having the context to learn as well helped a lot. But on this side, I had a lot of um, personal work that I put in, like watching movies with subtitles or without subtitles, trying to and forcing myself to talk to locals and exchange with them for as long as possible just so I can widen my vocabulary um, days and um, every time I had any question just asking a French speaker so that they could help as well so it was a mix of what we learned in the class and the exercises we had and personal um, and personal efforts which is watching movies things that I enjoyed as well so it wasn't boring to learn and exchanging with people as much as possible in French, just to, to make sure that I'm getting more. Excellent. And um, something else uh, that's not necessarily related to the program, but to the context of international travel, visa and all of those things. So Sebastian, we have a question from uh, Ziad and Sujata. Okay, what if the borders remain closed? I know that France has declared recently that normally students would be able to come, but what if this uh, doesn't reflect or changes from now to September and students are not able to come? How is it going to work? Are courses going to be uh, proposed online or what is the solution in this case? Yes, of course. So we have anticipated this scenario that uh, we wish it's not going to happen, but anyway. So all the courses will be in uh, both face-to-face uh, -face option plus also an online um, option, meaning that if you can join friends because the borders are open, because you have your visa, you are more than welcome to join us in the class and you will see uh, the teacher live plus the other uh, uh, students uh, in the same classroom, of course. But if you cannot join, we have already anticipated everything. By the way, we finished the second semester of the previous year this way. So everything will be available online, live as well, so that you can attend the class, you can raise your hand to ask questions, you can interact with the other students and the professors as well. And if your time zone is really uh, too far from our time zone, uh, we will also record some of the classes so that they are available in replay on our intranet website. And then you can uh, watch them, um, I mean, uh, on demand, whenever you are uh, available, even if it's not in the same time zone than France. So once again, we have anticipated all of that. Everything is ready for, uh, for the intake. 
So whatever your situation, if you can join or not, you won't lose any time and uh, everything will be done for you to have the best academic experience as possible. Okay, great. I think we have covered so the important uh, topics related to the MSc in Business Intelligence and Analytics. So before uh, bringing the discussion to an end, I'd like to ask you, Sebastian, if you would like to add something else or just to provide a summary of what we have seen or just a conclusion to this discussion that you would like so to address to our uh, followers. So to conclude, um, I'm just going to give you some examples of what you're going to do with us if you join this program. If you want, for instance, to build your own KPI, Key Performance Indicator, as a future manager, you will be able to do that with us and even record an e-learning video to do it. If you want to know how to do BI projects, then you will practice the Agile method called Scrum to do at least two BI projects in the semester. If you want to practice a data visualization tool and work, improve your data storytelling, which is extremely important when you are in a professional context, Come with us and you will have also many opportunities to do it. So these are just some examples to give you, uh, I mean, uh, an overview of what you're going to do with us in this program. It's not only the technical side of business intelligence, it's really all the aspects of business intelligence and analytics. Great. I think that's all for now. Uh, I would like so uh, to take the chance to remind our followers of some important details. We do remind you that applications are still running. We are there to help you out. And they are still running till the end of July. And uh, the application, how is the application process like? There is an application portal where we ask you to submit your documents on the link that you can see uh, over there. And then there will be so the video interview as a second step. And if you have the least amount of uh, uh, questions. So please uh, don't hesitate to contact us by email. My email is over there. If you have anything at all, any help, we are there to support you. So uh, I would like to thank everyone. So thank you so much, Sebastian. Thank you so much, Aditutu, for being there. It was a true pleasure to be here with you uh, today. And uh, yeah, thanks to every follower that was there with us today. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. We would like just to remind you that there are more sessions taking place over the full week. Tomorrow, there will be a presentation of the school. We will present the MSc in Corporate Finance and FinTech and the MSc in Supply Chain Purchasing, Supply Chain Management, starting from 12 p.m. to uh, 3 p.m. French time. So stay tuned and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.